morning, a little story time, and explain how I feel about really inappropriate encounters that I had in business and how they're making me feel now that I've sat and reflected. In the past few weeks, I have experienced a lot of inappropriate behavior in regards to business from women as well as men, an enormous amount of disrespect and inappropriate behavior by men. I had a total of four business meetings where all four business meetings I was sexualized, inappropriately spoken to. Let's address the elephant in the room. It's never easy dealing with inappropriate behavior, especially in a work setting as an independent contractor, small business owner. You have every right to feel validated, safe, and respected. Your voice matters. Your opinion's likely better than most in the room. And in certain situations, it's, it's crucial that you assert yourself. So today I wanted to chat about my experiences with this. In the past, I can tell you that my behavior would have been emotional. I would have cried. I would have raised my voice. I would have stomped my feet. I would have behaved like a child. I would have been very emotionally inappropriate. Because of the things that I've done to work on myself, work on my confidence, work on my value, I was able to handle these situations with grace. I actually leave the experiences feeling really empowered. Even though the disrespect happened, it's how you respond to a situation that matters. Confrontation can sometimes make things more uncomfortable, more awkward. It can actually poke the other person. When someone treats you poorly, understand that they're usually just showing you that they devalue themselves, rejecting. I think that's a big part of things too. I think it's very common when you point something out to someone and you offer criticism and they get angry, guilty, I do this myself. They get angry, they say, that's not what I meant, blah, blah, and they get like all Meh. It's because they're embarrassed because you just pointed out a flaw that they might believe about themselves, a belief that they feel about themselves because looking at their own flaws makes them uncomfortable. Everyone looking at their flaws, everyone gets uncomfortable. Even I do, decades after healing and all the modalities and blah, blah, blah. The first meeting caught me very off guard. I was very tired. It was very late in the evening. I was not prepared for what was coming my way. There were explicit comments made to me using literally the word sex. And I just remember thinking, how did I get here? How is it 2024? I'm at the level of success that I'm at. I feel like I've learned how to to show confidence, show strength, show power to people. And this person still feels that it's appropriate to behave this way in a business meeting where it's my job to help them. The goal of the meeting was for me to agree to represent the item that they had to sell. People will respect you or not respect you based on the way you behave. After this person, the initial meeting started to behave in such a way, I immediately shut down. I stopped replying. I acted bored. I asked to leave. I did not engage with any conversation that they were having with me. I stared blindly, blinking. The unfortunate part was is I was at a restaurant booth and there was someone sitting next to me and I'm in the corner and this person's at the other booth. I was literally cornered, like in the corner of the restaurant, in the corner of the booth with people on all sides that I, I didn't really know. And this is the conversation that's happening. But this gave me a clue. This experience gave me the information that more was to come. So now I'm more prepared for the second encounter. As I spent time over these few days of meetings, it became very obvious that I wasn't considered an equal in business. And the irony was at one point in the meeting, I actually articulated to one of the gentlemen, it's very upsetting for me when I have a work business relationship with a man and he doesn't consider me equal when he doesn't behave like we're at the same level and I'm really tired as a woman in business being treated this way and less than 24 hours later they treated me that way even after I articulated how disappointed I would be to work with a person behave that way this man chose to behave that way again you think I'm going to help you I think what's helped me become more confident in these conversations and understanding the situation scenario of how it's happening is I understand my value. 10 years ago before I worked on healing myself, curing myself as a former narcissistic snack to a very emotionally manipulative father. I understand that what someone says to me, just because they're saying it doesn't mean it's real. The way these men are behaving has nothing to do with me. When I googled this for the topic, there was a website that referenced saying, I'm not comfortable with those remarks, please keep this professional. Personally, I feel like that's just gasoline. I feel like when you tell a man that he's doing something wrong when he feels like he's in the right, you're just poking at him. So I, I personally don't recommend that. I was understanding and fully prepared for what the fourth encounter was going to be. The second one blew me out of the water. The second encounter was like very enraging, but I knew after the second encounter that I was done. By the fourth one, I was geared ready to go I was like okay let's sit down let's sit back and enjoy this popcorn show because this is going to be ridiculous and it was nothing shy of ridiculousness because I knew it was coming I saw the writing on the wall here are three tips that I have I used recently in these experiences and I've mentioned this in other videos before the thing that's really worked for me in the last year with dealing with people that are triggered by me is to just stare at them 
it makes people very uncomfortable when you just stare at them. I don't know what that is. Let's Google it. Staring at someone is the most nondescript way of saying that you hostily disapprove of the behavior. You don't have to say anything. You just give the look. Your hands are clean. You've said nothing. No one has heard you emotionally lash out or say something that might be considered too emotional. You just stare. You can stare with an angry face. You can even stare with a smile. Like, are you kidding? Obviously, it has to feel like the safe situation to utilize the blank stare. I really enjoy using it with tone. Tone is a big thing. I've really worked on trying to be consciously aware of my tone. When I say things sometimes, it does sound bitchy, even though I'm not trying to be bitchy. There's a way to say things. There's a, oh, you're late. Oh, you're so late. What happened? Oh, you're late. Based on someone's PTSD of their experiences from the past, like at a first encounter, you can't ever know what someone's PTSD is. So how you say things really matters. You can just stare at the person and sometimes they just talk themselves out of the argument. Sometimes they just ramble on because they're so uncomfortable with the silence that they just fill the space. And I've actually had encounters where I've used the blank stare, blink, and they eventually apologize because they go full circle through, oh, she didn't think that was funny. Let me try a different joke. Oh, that joke didn't hit either. Maybe this person can't be manipulated by my dry sarcastic humor. Oh, yeah, she's not buying it. Oops, okay, now what do I do? Abort. I'm supposed to have a relationship with this person and I completely blew that up and burned that. I guess I'll apologize because that's their way of like trying to beat you back in. So I accept the apology, but you will never share space with me again. When you don't explode back at someone, they usually diffuse and fizzle themselves for you. I will also use this on the phone. If you say something inappropriate or you raise your voice inappropriately or if you use foul language at me inappropriately, I will just sit on the phone in silence. And when you say, hey, are you still there? I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm still here. And I won't articulate anything. I'll just sit in silence because I'm not here to play small. I've said that many a time. You will not make me feel small. You will not treat me like I am small. And I know my value. I've grounded into my body and know, and I understand that we both were birthed onto this planet pretty much the same way. So we're equal. The only hard part is, is you're mistreating me. So that actually makes you less than me. Yeah. Ways to shut down an argumentative person or disrespectful person. Say something very neutral. In this fourth encounter, when they're offering me this marriage certificate and not taking it seriously, I said, could you tell me more about your product? How did you evaluate your product? You control your emotions. I know. We're women. We are bred to have emotions. <laughs> but we are mocked for those emotions. So in business, it's, I think, really vital to stay monotone and not cry in front of a business encounter. Absolutely go in the bathroom and cry later. If someone's behaving inappropriately, don't ask for their input. Don't ask for their opinion. Get to the nuts and bolts of what you're looking for. Ask your questions, gather your data. Literally, I just spoke over him when he would reference anything that wasn't about what the business meeting was for. And then after I had given 11 minutes, I politely stood up and walked out. And when this person communicated the next day, hey, I just wanted to follow up on this meeting. What do you think I did? I don't know if there's a right or a wrong answer to this situation, but I have no interest in representing this person. I didn't reply. You've already wasted enough of my time and energy. You haven't earned, respect is earned. You haven't earned a reply. It may have been more professional of me to respond and say, hey, I'm not interested in working together, but I don't owe this person anything because they don't respect me. Maybe in other situations when someone said one thing that was maybe inappropriate, but the rest of the meeting was somewhat productive and they did answer some of your questions, I would then say, I'm really not interested in this working bit, working relationship. But when you come at me with sexual comments inappropriately in a business encounter, I'm close. Also something that was really fun to say, some of these encounters was no, and that's it, no. There was a female involved in this experience who was behaving very poorly to my friend, my business partner. I had not met them yet, and so they chose to sidebar me and say, hey, uh, we'd still like to work with you. I chose to respect my friend's feelings, who I've known for 10 years, and I said, unfortunately, no. And that's pretty much all I said. It doesn't matter what your side of the story is. It doesn't matter what actually happened. I'm just not interested. The words that she used about my friend, who I've known again for 10 years, were so far off who the person is, that if that is your interpretation of my friend of 10 years, we're done here. It doesn't matter your side. It doesn't matter what you have to offer me. Potentially, hypothetically, what you have. I'm over it. So for me, these experiences really helped my confidence. These scenarios used to upset me. These scenarios used to set me back. These encounters used to make me feel really uncomfortable. These encounters used to make me feel less than. And I don't feel that way anymore. I actually feel more intelligent, more professional, more successful, more empowered than I have ever been or ever felt. I'd like to clarify that if the situation calls for an explanation or 
cooperation or cohesion or collaboration. Obviously, please articulate yourself. Use your words. If you are being threatened, belittled, put down, accused of something far from your character, which was what the second meeting was, it's best to just remove yourself from the situation. It's not a speed bump. It's a sinkhole. This person has shown you, you their true colors and they've shown you how they're going to behave. And it's likely that no actual serious business will come to fruition. And time is money for me. And I would much rather be at the pool getting a tan, which I'm pretty tan, than trying to force square into a circle. I love that I did that for myself. I love that I left these meetings as a whole feeling really comfortable, grounded and safe in my ability to self-love and validate myself. 10 years ago, this would have broken me. I would have spent weeks being really upset that I had wasted time, money, and effort. And this is how the situation un unfolded. But instead, now I feel like what a blessing of an experience that was to showcase and highlight the abilities that I've worked on, the tools that I've sharpened, and damn sis, like, you're a badass. It felt so good. It still feels so good. In the beginning of my sales career, I had clients that would hire me, would admit after a month or two of working together, they would literally be like, hey, um, I know that we've been like working together for a while now, but I actually don't intend to buy anything that you're selling. I just really wanted to hang out with you and date you. And it also reminded me that I'm really comfortable firing people. I'm 100% comfortable. There was a point in my career when a manager said to me, you have to, in this business, you have to get used to people pooping on you. It's not what they literally said, obviously they used a different word. And I said, I will not tolerate that. That is not what I look for my future, I, I won't. I, this person has been in so many lawsuits, has so much negative, dark associations with their name and their business. I can't even tell you how bad their reputation is. So they were wrong. You don't need to let people poop on you. Everyone comes into this earth experience the same way, pretty much. What I've preached with mindset, mindfulness and health and healing and working through things is it's not what your experience is. It's how you recover and come out of it. Losing my brother, I literally actually can see the spot where he passed right now. Losing my brother heightened my senses in the value of my life, the value of the minutes of each day, the value of how I allow people in, what I allow people to say, how I allow people to treat me. It has amplified that information for me and I feel so blessed. I take it as a blessing. It's an unfortunate experience of what happened with him, but he is with me more than ever. <laughs> so I don't miss his spirit because his spirit lives on in me because I live my life now for both of us. I do, he comes with me places. These experiences helped me to remind myself I'm a badass. It's not not what happens to you, it's how you work through it. It's what you do with it. You could spill a gallon of milk on the floor and be devastated and it could ruin your day. You immediately are angry and all that stuff. Or you could look at the milk on the floor and laugh. So the experience that I had was so worth it. Even though nothing that I thought I was going to receive is what I received, what I received was priceless and incredibly valuable. And I feel more empowered now than ever before. I hope you can utilize some of this. I think for me, what I learned this week is I was able to navigate being assertive with femininity. I've always felt when I was judged or taken advantage of in business or spoken to inappropriately in business situations, it's how you handle situations. Going forward, that matters. As long as you're getting a smidge better each time, I applaud that sis, I'm here for that. This is what we're here for. This is what this channel is for. If you're a little bit, you're half percent better every day, so happy. If this video helps one person, I'm so happy. As always, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this video helps provide information for your growth, for you to live your best life. My goal is to provide that big sis guidance that I really missed out on. I really missed out on having motherly advice as well. Hopeful to help hold your hand through this journey called life. Bye for now, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, please don't ever forget your value. To me, you are so special and you should feel super special to yourself too. And the more you believe and harness and channel that vibration, the more others will believe you. Focus on you, sis, and the world will get brighter. Bye! <laughs> Shout out to my friend. We went to New Zealand together and she got me this necklace because when I went through customs, I forgot that there was a pair. In this little bag that I had with some books that I had purchased, the Department of Agriculture pulled me to the side and charged me like $350 for this singular pair. She thought it'd be cute to get me a tiny little pear-shaped diamond to remember this experience. And trust me, I will never bring fruit through customs accidentally ever again.